Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today is the 4th of May, or May the 4th. And of course, that's all the more important for its connection to Star Wars, and we all get a little bit excited about our favorite toys. And mine, when I was a little fella and to this day, the original trilogy remains my favorite. And one of those early scenes where the droids are being sold off by the Jawas always stands out as a really interesting one to me. I loved it as a kid. So what I've got here, the two astromechs, they are 3D prints from Darkfire Designs, and the astro, not the astromech, sorry, the protocol droid, our towering C-3PO there, he is the golden translator from Skullforge. And I'll make sure that the links to those are in the description. So if you've got a printer, you can pick those up yourself. Or if you happen to have official miniatures that you want to paint along using similar techniques, well, all of the paints will be listed in the description below. So let's get started. Now, since he is going to be the easier one to paint, I'm going to start by painting 3PO. Now, you'll notice straight away he's not glued to the base with the other two droids. And the reason for this is because I wanted to prime him separately. Uh, if you are going to be painting these guys already attached to their individual bases, because you're going to be using them for games, you're not going to have to worry about drilling a hole in his foot, jamming a bit of wire in there, and sticking him on a cork. That step you can happily skip. Uh, I had to do a little bit more fuss, of course. What I've done then is to prime him with Retributor Armor, but uh, I do tend to find, especially with 3D prints, there's just something about the way that it collects on that surface, which isn't quite perfect. So I've got some Retributor Armor from the pot, and I'm going to very lightly go over the whole body again. You'll see this very quickly smooths everything out, shoves them around on the base of it, and yeah, brightens them up just a little. Now once that's dried thoroughly, we're going to shade the whole miniature to get some depth to this gold. Now there's two ways you can do this. I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade because I want a darker, slightly grimier finish. Particularly in A New Hope, in the earlier scenes with 3PO, he looks pretty grubby. Uh, if you want a warmer, more cared-for looking gold, then maybe something like Reichland Flesh Shade would look better as a shade here. But I know what I'm up to and what I'm looking for, so this is how I'm going to go about it. You'll see it's monstrously dark going on, <laughs> but not to worry. As it dries, it's going to chill out a little bit, but we have got more that we're going to do to this over the top. So make sure that you are getting it into all the little nooks and crannies. And then we'll leave this for a few minutes to dry. Luckily, it's nice and sunny today. When that dries, boy is that dark. But we're going to brighten them up now. What I've got is one of my big soft makeup brushes, which I tend to really like using for dry brushing because it's a little difficult to actually put too much pressure on the miniature. What I'm going to load this up with is a bit of Sigmarite, which is a nice faded gold kind of color. I think it's going to work really well for the battered, worn kind of gold I want my 3 pair to be. So once I'm all loaded up, let's just start flicking down his chest a few times, keeping the brush moving in the same direction as much as possible. And you'll see we start getting that nicer worn gold rather than just grimy and dirty. So I'm going to go around the whole miniature and dry brush him quite heavily with Sigmarite. Some of you were probably waiting for me to forget, but what I've got here is some Iron Hand Steel, and we're going to paint in his shin down on the right hand side, because 3PO has a silver leg. Now the exact shade of silver you use here is really up to you. Uh, this would almost change color on screen, you know, depending on lighting, environmental effects, all that sort of thing. So pick what you like, and just cover over the, the whole shin down. Now once that's dry, I'm going to apply a wash. This is Dark Tone from the Army Painter. Uh, rather than using non-oil these days because it doesn't stain in quite the same way as it used to, I want quite a deep smoky finish in the recesses here, so Dark Tone is my go-to for that. Now once that's dried, we're going to finish off his body. What I've got is Necron Compound, and again, one of my big soft makeup brushes. And this time I'm going to be a little bit more careful in how I apply it. I want to use this to catch just the edges of areas of detail. So particularly on his chest, taking a little bit of time to angle my brush so that I'm just getting the chest plate 
and the little silver ring on his chest there. You see how we're building that up. And around on other details, like his shoulders, edges of his hands, his fingers and what have you. Take your time here and be pretty careful with how much of this you apply, because if you put too much on, he's just going to look like a dusty silver. Now I think we're starting to capture that grimy 3PO finish. What I've got here is Black Legion, because now what we're going to paint in is the little tummy section. And this will cover very quickly. And just mind you don't stray too close to the gold parts, you want to stay gold. Now exactly what a 3PO sort of belly section looks like depends a little on what film you're watching. But one of the constants is that there's usually little red cables in a few spots. So I've got here some corn red, it's nice and dark. And I'm just going to draw in a few of these little lines. And uh, I don't want to do too many of them, to be honest. Just enough to add a little bit of visual interest here. I'll take just a little bit of white scar. And we're going to need this for the Astromex as well. So we'll dot in his eyes here. And then to add a bit of color to them, I'm going to use some Contrast Imperial Fist. Just dot those in really quickly. You could use iron and yellow here, but that's going to give you a slightly oranger, more orange recess, I should say. Uh, but really, again, how 3PO looks is up to you. Now, nice and quickly, there's our 3PO done. I'm going to go ahead and put him aside for now. I am going to varnish him a little bit later on, but I'm going to varnish the other droids at the same time. And that's going to change up the surface of the miniature a little bit and make him look a bit more shiny, which I do still want. Now here on the display base that they're all going to be mounted to are my two Astromex. And I suspect strongly that I probably should have done them individually like I have done with C-3PO, but oh well, everything's a learning experience. <laughs> Talking about learning, what I'm going to do is actually shade these guys first. They've been primed with matte white from the Army Painter, but now I'm going to apply two different shades to them to get a feel for how they look. Now, wonderfully enough, these two droids aren't quite the same color. So if this works out by them looking a little bit differently to one another, oh well, not a big problem. I'm going to start with Soul Blight Gray. This is a shade from Citadel. I'm going to apply this over R5. Now, I quite like that finish. That actually works rather well. It's a slightly grubby, off-white gray. There's a few areas I'm going to come back with a brush later. But as a base for a, a industrial kind of white, that's quite cool. What I'm going to use on R2, though, is Templar White from Vallejo. This is one of their new Express colors. Very much like contrast. And I'm going to use this instead of Apothecary White because, well, I want to see how this one works. So over... Okay, so this isn't quite as blue as Apothecary White would be. Uh, but it is definitely more of a blue-white finish than soul blight grey. Okay, liking this. Now, side by side, that is a really interesting comparison. The soul blight grey is, of course, grey, whereas the Templar white, it's not quite as blue as Apothecary white is by comparison, but it's more clinical, I think is the word I would use. It looks a little bit more like stumbling into a hospital. But interesting, that's what I wanted to see was the difference between these two whites. What I'm going to do now is grab some white scar and you guessed it, big old makeup brush. And I am going to very lightly dry brush all over the droids to brighten them up again. I really want to leave just the uh, shading that we've done in the recesses here. So R5 is probably the easier fella to start with. Now we've got two little droids who are both clearly white, but have different recess shading to them. And I'm really happy with how that's turned out. That's exactly what I wanted. What I'm gonna do now is grab some Azerman Blue, which is one of the newer contrast, and start painstakingly painting in these little panels. I might wanna get up an even smaller brush to do this, and you'll see probably why I have uh, not painted the silver on the dome yet, because I can use that as a tidy up stage for, my goodness, the mess I'm going to make here. 
so around we go. Unfortunately, there isn't really a quicker way of doing this. We do have to paint them all in. And yeah, I'm going to be as tidy as I can be, especially when it comes to areas that are going to be white. I'm going to use a very fine brush here to basically dot in the little working arms on his chest and hope that the uh, contrast flows where it needs to be, because obviously on the real R2, these aren't actually recessed, but they're recessed here to make them slightly easier to paint. Now, as well as on R2, R5 also has some blue details, and I am going to azim and blue them at the same time. You'll see my hand is not as steady as I would like, and uh, luckily we are going to clean up as we go, so I'm trying to bear that in mind, and leave that as it is for now, while I apply some Baal Red to R5. So all his little red dilly boppers, in the same way. And hopefully I don't need to tidy up as much of this as I do the blue. <laughs> now for reasons I don't fully understand, my hands were much more steady for the red than the blue. Which is great, that's fine, that's cool, I'll deal with that. What we're going to use for the silver is Runefang Steel. Now this is quite a bright silver, but then R2's got quite a bright head. So what I'm going to do is start applying this and using this as my tidy up stage, rather than going back over these little bits with white, because with a bit of luck, we're not going to need to. Now, full disclosure, that's not a fun bit to do. Uh, that took me a little bit of work, and about halfway through I realized, wait, why am I using Runefang Steel? And I actually swapped to Silver from Vallejo's Model Metallic Airline. And uh, that just, it does cover a little bit better, so especially over bits that you need to cover the blue, Swap to that silver if you can get your hands on it. It is much more useful. What I'm going to do now is a few of the uh, sort of functional metal bits. And for this, I'm going to use Lead Belcher. Uh, so let me get the right angle here. And just a few of the little bits that we want to look metallic, uh, but like they see a bit of use. We're going to pop on Lead Belcher now, because it will look much darker in comparison to that silver. It's kind of amazing to me how quickly R5 comes together once you do that. What I've got now is White Scar, and we're going to go back and start tidying up any of the little splash over parts. So here, particularly R2, is going to start looking a bit tidier. Now as well as doing that tidy up on R2 and R5, I dotted in this tiny little lens with some white, and it wants to focus on R5, so we're going to watch that as I use a little bit of Fleshed Hair as Red, just to dot in that lens there. Then what I have is Nasdrake Yellow, of all things, and I'm going to use this to quickly blast over the little cables on their feet. Well, feet. You know what I mean. And then finally, with Black Legion, we're going to dot in the little lens on the front of R2's face. Well, face. Again, you know what I mean. <laughs> And then I did dot in just a tiny wee bit of white in the corners, well, the opposite sides, shall we say, of the little round lens. Now, we can glue C-3PO to the base. What I'm going to do now is take this little group outside, and I'm going to hit them with a varnish of Munitorum Varnish. It's a spray one, and it's not a true matte, it's more of a satin. Why I'm picking that is because I think it's going to help bring out some of the shininess without making them glossy, and that's important. So. Fingers crossed, I come back with exactly what I want. And there is that slight luster I'd been hoping for. So, perfect. What I'm going to do now is very quickly chuck a base on. What I've got here, this is the Brown Earth Texture uh, from Vallejo, and it is magic. Big, huge walloping pot of this. And I'm just going to jam all over the base. Not worrying too much if I do actually hit the miniatures, because, you know, Tatooine's dirty. And then once that's had plenty of time to dry, we're going to dry brush this quite generously with Dark Sand from Vallejo. Although Tyrant Skull will also work perfectly well in its place. And now what we're going to do is make an awful mess. What I have here is one dot of brown sand mixed in with about 12 drops of water. And I'm going to start just splattering this fairly messily, 
over the bottoms of the droids. Now, try and keep this as haphazard as you can. But once that dries, they look a little bit more interesting and the setting just looks a bit more lived in. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just to paint the rim of the base so that they are all done, really. And uh, let's get a look at this when it's all finished. And there at last, our little diorama is complete. And I've had a ton of fun painting this. While I did mention that ordinarily I wouldn't paint these guys all on one base, um, and certainly splitting off 3PO like I did, I think doing it this way made things a little bit easier in the long run. Though next time I would probably try and pin the astromechs to something so that I had a little bit more control over the base than trying to hold that great honking thing and paint two of them at the same time. That did make it a little tricky. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers Ellen, Kyrie, Rod, Jimmy, Andrew, and Phil. Your support means the world, folks, and it lets me keep buying resin. Now, if you've got any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, and may the fourth be with you. <laughs>